that's right. You know what time it is. It's time for the Sugar Creek Forest Build Along 2012. I got my hand on the fire, I'm putting the fire to the seal. Come on, Sugar Creek Forest, won't you tell me what's the deal? All right. Hey, everybody. It's a nice but a very snowy day in Sugar Creek, Ohio. Um, I don't know, we've got a couple inches of snow on the ground, and uh, it's a Saturday. I'm feeling relaxed and lazy. It's uh, about uh, almost 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Drinking some coffee, and uh, wanted to start a, a video. We're moving towards heat treating our knives in the Sugar Creek Forge uh, knife build along. And I want to show you a couple of options for heat treating knives. And um, I want to do a couple of those options for heat treating at home and in a very do-it-yourself kind of way. And um, basically I'm going to show you how to make um, two small uh, forges for heat treating. Um, one of those is going to run off of charcoal and uh, one of those is going to run off a small uh, regular propane um, style torch. And uh, I just made these uh, or making these out of real common materials and um, this will probably take at least two videos so anyway let's jump right in and make a little forge together <laughs> this is what I look like when I'm shopping with my wife I have these real mixed emotions I love my wife I like being with her she's a lot of fun but I get bored shopping my adult ADD kicks in and so I invented a game it's called look for cool stuff in a store that I could make into other cool stuff and I want to teach you how to play this game and we're gonna do that at Dollar General in Sugar Creek Ohio okay so here I am at the uh, Sugar Creek dollar store Dollar General and uh, this is kind of uh, knife making uh, headquarters believe it or not and uh, show you some good cheap uh, materials you can use for the build along So the first time that I saw these reflector bowls, they just screamed at me that they wanted to be a forge. You get two of these bowls nested together. They're made out of stainless steel and they only cost $5. What a great deal. These will be a great start for us. Hey look, here's a screen for the bottom of our forge. It's made out of stainless steel and it's only $1.50. We're grabbing that. We're going over to the pet section and we're going to buy this EverPet Basics litter. It's unscented and all natural. The primary ingredient, the only ingredient actually of this is bentonite clay, which is going to be perfect for making some mortar for our forge. It's inexpensive. It only costs a dollar for seven pounds and it's unscented and that's what we want. And now a quick stop at uh, Holmes Lumber or Sugar Creek Lumber. You can see the Swiss scene painted on the front. And we're going to grab a little bit of hardware to complete our forge. So here's all the parts on this table. And um, we're going to assemble it. And it's easier to tell you what the parts are as we make it. And then you'll understand what they're for as well. Be careful working with this stuff. Don't hurt yourself. This is a very important safety warning. Do not use galvanized metal in your little forge. Galvanization is when zinc covers another metal to make it more rust resistant. But when zinc burns, it releases a gas that is very poisonous to you and can really hurt you and mess up your immune system. Don't use it. If in doubt, ask someone if it's zinc. The first part I bought at the hardware store was this floor flange. Uh, it's for a one inch pipe. Now all the pieces for this build that I bought are one inch pieces of pipe and fittings. And you can see what I did is just drilled some holes through to fit the flange and put the flange between the small bowl and the big bowl that's on the bottom. Fits in perfect and just bolts the two together. The next piece that I bought of this black iron pipe was this nipple that is threaded completely along its length and it fits right into the bottom of that flange. The next part is a black iron elbow, screws right onto the nipple and changes the direction of the flow. Then I bought a nine inch long piece of pipe that screws right into that elbow. Onto that elbow I screwed on a plastic elbow pipe. And then I just stuck a 24 inch piece of one inch PVC pipe into that and there you have it. 
the last piece I bought. This is a piece of one and one half inch black iron pipe. It's five inches long and it has a cap screwed onto it. This is going to be our heat treat chamber and it's going to keep our knife from excessive oxidation. Put it aside for later. We're going to want to line our forge with something to protect it and insulate it. We could use this furnace cement, but it's too expensive. We're going to make our own excellent refractory clay. This is where the kitty litter comes in. This clay is going to be the basis for our mix. Please buy new. Evie Crawfish, don't use old cat litter. Okay, so this part of the process is going to drive our friends who are real analytical uh, kind of crazy, but this is more art than science. And so you want to start out using some hot water. And I used about half a quart of hot water, and then I'm going to pour in uh, about twice as much kitty litter and let it soak. This is much more done by feel, and uh, I'll explain as we go along. But you're going to let it soak because it takes a while for the clay to get soft. Now grind up some of the kitty litter using an old coffee grinder or just rolling it with a rolling pin on a hard surface, and you'll want at least four cups of this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I've got the kitty litter in here. And um, this uh, tool right here is my wife's um, thing that she uses for mashing potatoes. And um, she's not here right now, so I think that I'm going to use home. this. Stop! What are you doing? So we're going to go with plan B and use this paint stir instead. Now you can see that some of the clay is dissolved and some of it is still lumpy. And that's okay because we actually want some lumps in this. We're just going to go ahead and stir it. You'll notice that the lumps fall right off the stick when it's held sideways. Now we'll add some of the finely powdered clay and keep mixing until we get the consistency that we're looking for. After stirring in a couple of cups, um, you can see that this is now starting to get very stiff and um, it's still a little bit wet, but you can see it really clings to the stick. And when I turn it sideways, it actually sticks to it. This gives us an indication it's almost ready. This is the last ingredient of our homemade kitty litter based refractory clay and insulator for our forge. Vermiculite is a naturally occurring mineral. It's very inexpensive. Uh, I bought a big bag of this for $4 several years ago. We're going to mix it in for its insulating properties, its ability to withstand heat, and also to kind of hold the mix together. We don't want to add too much. So I'm going to start out with a plastic cup full of vermiculite and I'm going to begin to mix it into my mixture and have it absorb some of the water and thicken the mix. You notice I just put about a quarter maybe of that cup in there. I'm going to start stirring it in, mixing it in carefully into the clay. It's getting really stiff now and that's what we want. If we make it too wet, it takes too long for it to dry and it also will crack more. Put in a little bit more, not even quite half the cup, maybe almost half of the cup. And we're going to mix it in until it's completely mixed and looks really good. And then we'll test it again for its stiffness. Thickness test, once again, sticks right on there without dropping off. In our forge, I've got gloves on to protect my hands, always use safety equipment. I've got this tightly put together, and I'm just taping some small pieces of sheet metal, just some thin tin or aluminum scraps I had, over the holes here, and then the clay will cover that up. That's what those scraps of metal look like. Okay, so now I'm just working this underneath the lip of the uh, forge there and pushing it in tightly to make sure that uh, the forge is uh, completely filled with insulation. This is easier than doing it separately. Well, my video memory card on my camera was full and uh, so I had to finish this, but you can see I've stuffed the first layer completely full of that react refractory cement. I've closed the holes and now it's time for this to dry and it's looking pretty good.
Total cost for this, $23. We could have even made it cheaper, but I wanted to make sure that it was made out of sturdy enough materials that uh, no one accidentally hurt themselves. And so there you have it, very inexpensive forge for heat treating uh, that you should be able to use for quite a while. So our next option for heat treating is to make a little propane powered forge out of this simple propane torch that's very inexpensive and works very well. We have to keep the flame insulated for it to get hot enough. Remember that working with propane is very dangerous. Don't make this forge. Don't use propane. If you are not aware of all of the safety rules, only work with this outside and wear eye protection and be very careful. This is what the nozzle of my propane torch looks like. You can see it's pretty beat up. I think I bought this one at a garage sale. And the opening in the forge is going to be this size. Another alternative is to use a map gas torch like this one on the left. It burns hotter than propane and uh, is fairly safe to use. We're going to use a large size coffee can for the body of this forge. And what I'm doing right now is packing some of our special uh, fire clay into the bottom of it and we're going to insulate it. You can see on the side that I've drilled a hole in it that is big enough for the nozzle of my uh, torch to fit in there and my propane torch is going to fire this forge. We don't want to put uh, too much of this clay in here at one time because it'll be so thick that it'd be very difficult to dry. So what I'm doing is building up the sides and we're going to fill this in two stages. So the sides are building up nicely and then I'm going to put uh, this piece of pipe that I had in my garage. It's a, a little over three inches in diameter. I'm going to put that in the center and put a dowel in through the hole to make a place for uh, our forge cavity and then also a place for the uh, propane torch to uh, fire into this whole apparatus. Again, I'm just trying to carefully build up the sides and then we're going to let those dry because they'll dry much faster than a can full of that refractory clay. We'll do it in uh, two parts and this forge will dry out a lot quicker than if we did it just in one shot. Now I just use the dowel to open up the hole for where the propane is going to shoot in. Just make sure that it's open. And now this is ready to dry. And when it is completely dry, we'll put the second layer in and finish out this forge. And now the hardest part of the build along. Or at least it's the hardest part for me. You've got to wait and allow that clay mixture to dry. That's why we don't want too much water in it because it will take a long time to dry and uh, I'm not patient enough for that. So I will uh, keep a close eye on this. I'm going to put this somewhere warm and uh, as soon as our little propane forge, the outer layer is dry enough, we'll put the inner layer in and let that dry as well. That's going to speed our drying time and also help to ensure that we've got a really good uh, strong lining inside of there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. It's going to be fun to fire these up and uh, to test them out. Uh, again, I'm showing you these two options for heat treating at home. And uh, after we build these, I'll also give you some other options for uh, sending your knife uh, blade away to be heat treated and um, a couple thoughts on that. So um, got some cool, uh, cool opportunities there for you as well. Uh, but I want to make sure that in this series, um, I'm, I'm teaching how you could make knives easily at home with no special tools that you have, and you have to fabricate the tools yourself. 
So um, there can be kind of some different degrees of how this build along works for others, but don't stress about the heat treating or the tempering. It's going to be fun and easy. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, that's right. So get your cameras ready.